My name is Jade and I'm from the University of Guelph and I'm here today to answer any questions that you may have about the university. So please if you do have questions raise your hand. This is meant to be a conversation and not necessarily just me speaking at you. Um, and I want you to ask yourself throughout the entire presentation, why Guelph? My answer obviously is why not Guelph because I graduated from there and I loved it. Um, so hopefully that's the point of the presentation today is to let you know why Guelph is a good option. So to give a little background about me, I graduated from the Bachelor of Arts in Psychology. I was in the co-op program and I also got a certificate in environmental citizenship. I worked and volunteered on campus throughout my undergraduate degree and all of those credentials led the university to believe I would be the best person to give you a personalized tour through this handbook. So all of UIC has one. This is for you to keep. There's a lot of information in this book and I sadly won't have enough time to go through all of it, but that's why this is for you to take home and underline, star, or dog ear any pages as I'm going through them, um, just so it'll be easier to find when you're looking at them later on tonight or maybe this week. So we're gonna be flipping through if you wanna follow along with me. On the inside of the first cover, as I said, it's, this is a great place to ask questions, but if you do find any questions later on when I'm gone, you can look at all of the social media handles that are listed on the inside of the first page and ask questions there using the hashtag future Griffin. Page one is our um, welcome from our president, Dr. Franco Vaccarino. He's pretty busy because he runs the university, so I'm here today just to welcome you and say hello from him. So we're gonna have a little pop quiz, but don't worry, the answers are all on the page. Can anyone tell me how many students we have on our campus? You get a pen if you know the right answer. Just yell it out. It's, it's in the circle right there. Yes, perfect. 22,648. So you get a pen. It's made out of recycled water bottles. And the, it looks pretty cool too. So we have about 22,500 students on our campus. That means we're about a mid-sized university. And so that meant for me, I was able to walk around campus every day and run into somebody that I recognized, but also if I was having a bad hair day, no one recognized me and it worked out really well. We're also a leading re uh, center in research. On page three, you can see how much we spend every year on research initiatives. And this is a harder question for a pen as well. Can someone tell me what SPARC stands for? It's down at the bottom of the page. For a pen. There we go, yeah. Students promoting awareness of research knowledge. So this is a place where students are able to write about um, different research initiatives going on on our campus. My favorite one to talk about is there's a professor right now trying to get us into a password-free world. So that works out really well for me because I forget my Apple ID password all of the time and soon they're not gonna be let me change my password anymore because I've done it too many times. So hopefully he'll be able to help us all out. One thing when going away to the university that I was kind of worried about was going from small classroom sizes into the large lecture halls that they always, people always talk about where you become an anonymous person. That's not necessarily true. On page four and five, you'll see information about our first year seminars. So that is a place where your only first year students are able to take those courses and you are in a class of up to only 18 students. And you learn about really cool topics such as chocolate, sleep, and baseball statistics. So they're pretty unique. Also, we want to make sure that you are supported even before you get on campus. So on page 12 and 13, you'll see some helpful ways that we can help you out with the transition. At the top of the page, you'll see Start Online. So that's an online forum where you're able to ask questions to upper your students that are in the same program as you, even before you get onto campus. So my friend Jasmine, she actually signed herself up for two classes at the same time. She didn't know that was possible, but it is. So she was able to talk to a student in the same program as her to help her um, figure out how to fix that even before she stepped onto campus. Turning to page 18 and 19, we have social supports. So we want you to succeed inside and outside of the classroom. So we have some supports in place to make sure that you can do just that. So we have Office of Intercultural Affairs, Student Health Services and LGBTQ support, but we also have Student Health Services and Health and Performance Centers. So when I was going into first year, I had just had surgery on my shoulder, so I was able to get physio on campus every single day of the week for my first year. They're very helpful there, so if that's ever something that you need to have done, they're very helpful. So we've talked about campus, 
but you might not know what campus looks like or where it is. So on the back inside cover is a page or is a, an aerial view of what our campus looks like. So Guelph is about an hour north of where we are right now and only about an hour and a half from Toronto. So our campus is very big, beautiful and lush, but I promise you it's not too big. I'm short, I'm only about five foot and my little legs can get me across campus in six minutes. And if you don't believe me, because this looks way bigger than that, you can come visit me and race me on fall preview day or science and engineering Sunday. On the back cover you can see them in the blue box. Fall preview day is November 6th, science and engineering Sunday is November 13th. So this is an open house where all the buildings are open on campus. You can talk to faculty, staff and students in your program and get questions answered and see the beautiful campus at the same time. If you can't make it to either of those days, we also do have campus tours offered that you can see in the orange box here. So they're offered two times during the weekdays, uh, every single day of the week, and once on Saturdays. Before we go any further, I do just want to point out on page 72 and 73, there's a VIP access card that you can, all of you can rip out right now, fill out, and I'll collect it at the end. And you'll be able to, I'll be able to send you emails um, about some more specific program information that you might be interested in. So feel free to rip it out right now and I'll collect it at the end. So we're going to talk about some admission information now. All of our admission information is towards the back of the book between pages 68 and 81. I'll be highlighting the most important information to you as you begin the application process to the University of Guelph, starting with the admissions requirement chart on pages 70 and 71. So this chart lists every degree program and all the required courses for every degree, progr degree program. Sorry. So in the first column, there's every, every degree program offered with a color, in a color box with a corresponding page number where you can find additional information. The second column lists all majors offered within that degree program and a star beside the major means it's offered with a co-op option. The third and fourth column lists all the required courses needed for each degree program. And the fifth column is estimated cutoff ranges. It's important to note that estimated cutoff ranges are an average taken over the last three years and are meant to be used as a guideline. Simply having an average that falls within this range doesn't necessarily guarantee you'll receive an offer of admissions. And the final column lists important notes that you should be aware of as some degree programs have recommended courses and additional criteria that you should be aware of. Does this chart make sense to everybody? It's a lot of information, but it is a one-stop shop for all of your needs for every degree program. So once you've figured out what degree program you're interested in and made sure you have all the required courses necessary, you'll want to make your application through the Ontario University Application Centre. And information on how to do that is found on page 74 and 75. So you'll make your application through that website and the deadline for early consideration is January 11th. Also found on this page is information on how to apply to more than one program at the university and also how to apply to co-op. Turning to page 76, I just want to highlight a very important supplementary form that you all should be aware of. It's called the student profile form. So this is a place where you can explain how non-academic factors may have affected your grades, including clubs, extracurricular activities, illness, or extenuating circumstances. Because our estimated cutoff ranges are not predetermined and depend on the number and quality of applicants we receive, I recommend all of you filling out this form even if you believe that your average will fall within the estimated cutoff ranges that we talked about on page 70 and 71. Also on this page, you'll see students, our information for students with disabilities, our English proficiency requirements, international baccalaureate um, requirements, and advanced placement courses. This chart might be really important for some of you for TOEFLs and IELTS, so you might just want to dog ear this page to see what those specific grades are for those courses. Turning to page 78, you'll see our admission plan. So that's when we'll be sending out our offers of admission and how we will be calculating your admission average. So we'll start sending out our offers of admission in late January and continue through May as your grades are submitted. And in each round of offers, we'll be looking at six grade 12 U or M level courses. In earlier rounds, we'll be looking at grade 11 U or M level courses where six grade 12 courses are not available. 
but in later rounds we'll only be looking at grade 12 U or M courses. And when creating your admission average, we will also be looking at the required courses um, for each degree program for that calculation. For more information on admission criteria and how we create our averages, you can look at this chart and compare it to the chart found on page 70 and 71. Make sense? Perfect. So that's how to get into the university. Now, if we talk about some finances, because that's one thing that many people do worry about for going to way to university. The University of Guelph, we are committed to a accessible university education. We believe that all students that are academically qualified to attend university should be able to regardless of financial obstacles. So we offer nearly $19 million in merit and needs-based scholarships and bursaries. But on 80, page 82, you'll also see other ways we can help you out financially. So that includes over 4,000 on-campus jobs, the, um, the administration of government student loans, and the support of financial aid counselors. On page 83, you'll also find some information on our scholarships. To search through hundreds of available scholarships, you can check out the scholarship um, search engine found in the black box at the bottom of the page. And some of our top scholarships are highlighted here. So our presidents, chancellors, and Lincoln Alexander scholarships are each worth $40,000 payable over four years with the opportunity to partake in a research assistantship. This, uh, these scholarships require an online student application form and the deadline is January 25th. If you're interested in more information about those specific scholarships, you can check out the blue um, link that's listed just right here on the page. The, uh, the Board of Governors Scholarship at the bottom of the page is an academic award and it's worth $20,000, payable over four years as well. The University of Guelph Entrance Scholarship is a guaranteed academic award based on your admission average, and the minimum admission average required to receive this award is 85%. The last two awards are pretty important, so if you want to highlight them or circle them, that might be good. They are the Accessibility and Registrar's Entrance Bursaries. So these are based both on your academics as well as your demonstrated financial need. These also require an online student application form with a deadline of April 15th. So one thing that I recommend when applying to scholarships, because of some of those early deadlines, I, can, I highly encourage you to apply to them even if you've not yet received an offer of admissions from the university, because we'll help you, um, we'll help you out by letting you know how much money you're expected to receive from the university by your response deadline of June 1st. Sound good? Perfect. So we've talked about admissions and finances. Now we'll be talking about all the different degree programs offered at the university. So that's what you'll be studying while you're at school, which is arguably the most important thing that you'll be doing while you're there. So as I said in the beginning, I was in the Bachelor of Arts, and you can find that on page 28. So not too long ago I was sitting in your shoes not really knowing exactly where I wanted to study or what I even wanted to study. So, but I found the Bachelor of Arts on page 28 and I loved how flexible it was. So I ended up in the psychology major where I was able to take really cool courses, um, called one of them being social personality development, how I interacted with other people and how they interacted with me. And I found it very interesting. But I was also able to take different courses from different majors. So for example, in music and popular culture, I looked at, um, I listened to music from the tragic clip all the way to classic hip hop. In English, I was able to read comic books and listen to different types of music and look at the social influences found there. And like the classic Guelph student in me, I fell in love with the environment. And I was actually able to combine what I was learning in my environment courses with psychology for a potential career opportunity later on. I really found that this was a very interdisciplinary program um, and it does range a lot farther than just the social sciences and psychology. You can also figure out the value of the dollar and understand some of those world puzzles because um, econ uh, econ oh economics is also found in this program, sorry. So this is a very interdisciplinary program but arguably the most interdisciplinary program is found on page 34, it's the Bachelor of Arts and Sciences. So this is a program for those of you that succeed in both the arts and the sciences and cannot choose between the two. Who says you have to choose? This is a place where you're able to get a minor in both the arts and the sciences and take courses that help bridge the gap between the two areas that you're studying. 
My friend Amira was in this program where she took a minor in psychology and a minor in molecular biology and genetics and now she's working towards becoming a genetic counselor. She really is, has a passion for helping out people and this major uh, really helped her help other people. On page 36 is the Bachelor of Applied Science and it is also a place, um, is also a program for those of you that like to help people. You'll be able to look at the development and health and well-being of humans all throughout their lifespan. And in child, youth and family, my friend Maria was able to look at the development from birth all the way until adolescence, all while getting her early childhood education certificate. Maria is a bodybuilder and she's really into eating healthy. But me, I'm more of a junior chicken kind of girl with like a side of french fries. And in our accredited applied human nutrition program, you'll be able to look at just how those different types of food affect your body. This is an accredited program for, through Dietitians of Ontario and you're able to partake in a third year dietetic internship where you can work towards becoming a dietitian. The, other, the final major that's offered in this program is the adult development where you'll be looking at the sociological, economic and physical um, uh, changes in a, someone's body from adolescence all the way until their golden years. In this program, there's a third year uh, practicum where all students are able to take what they're learning in the classroom and apply it into the real world before they actually graduate. So they have great hands-on experiences. Another group of science students on our campus that have great hands-on experiences is found on page 55. It is our Bachelor of Science students. So they say the study of science is looking at um, the natural and physical world through observation and experimentation. Luckily for you, that's exactly how we teach our students. So there's a common first year all students will um, take in this program to understand all the core competencies of maths and sciences before they get going in their specialty. Our science students have a brand new science building that has great labs and spaces to do group work as well as alone work. There are two different paths you can take in this program, the biological sciences or the physical sciences. In the physical sciences, you'll be able to look at how the world works. So in nanoscience, for example, students are able to look at organisms smaller than the tip of their pen, up close and personal with our scanning electron microscope. And in our newest major, mathematical sciences, our students are able to take a stream in either math or statistics and pair it with another major found on campus. So my favorite one to talk about is pairing statistics with economics, where you can work towards becoming a fraud detector with the government or police. It's pretty cool options. In the biological sciences, you'll be able to look at the health and well-being of plants, animals, and humans. And my roommate Heather was in zoology, where she was able to look at vertebrates and invertebrates, all shapes and sizes. And in her lab, she was actually able to have hands-on experiences with some live creatures. One of the ones she told me about was working with a lobster. So you actually get um, very unique hands-on experiences. Our biodiversity students also have hands-on experiences as they are tasked with coding different species. So at the University of Guelph, we are hoping to have a different genetic code for all the species found on Earth, which is a very large task to undertake. But our students have actually gone into sushi restaurants and coded the different types of fish that they find on their plates. And you'd really be uh, surprised what they try to pass off as red snapper, because it's not always the what they say it is that what's you're eating. For those of you that might be interested in becoming a vet, we have our Doctor of Veterinary Medicine program, and this is the Bachelor of Science is a great program as a stepping stone to becoming a vet. Information for that is found on page 62. So our Doctor of Veterinary Medicine program is the best veterinary um, college in Canada and is the eighth best in the world. So this is commonly what we're mostly known for. And my friend Meg has always wanted to become a vet. So in high school, she decided to come to Guelph to get close to the vet college and have great hands-on experiences with vets inside and outside of the college. Um, if this is something you're interested in doing, I really recommend you highlighting this area of the page as there are some very specific requirements to, be, to get into vet school. And you really do get to see it all. So two years ago, a 10-foot albino python was airlifted to Guelph because it was choking on a towel. So they performed surgery on, this, on the big python and it's actually still alive today. So it's not all puppies and kittens at the vet college, you really do get to see it all there. This is a very unique program to Guelph and we also have some other unique programs with a scientific focus. And one of those can be found on page 50. 
Bachelor of Science in Agriculture. So the agriculture industry is one of the largest industries in Canada and is a multi-billion dollar industry. There are currently three jobs for every one student that graduates from this program. And some of the jobs that these students are able to get into include understanding how uh, food goes from farm to fork, how different weather patterns and crop productions changes the price of our food today, and food packaging to make sure that food doesn't spoil before it reaches its final destination. Another program that's very unique to Guelph is on page 52, just one page over, Bachelor of Science in Environmental Sciences. So this is a program where you're able to look at environmental issues through a scientific lens. So I like to think of a pond when thinking about this uh, program to explain all the different majors. So ecology students would be able to uh, look at the plants and animals surrounding the pond and how they interact. The environment and resource management students are able to look at the plants, animals, and water, how they might be affected through deforestation, habitat loss, or pollution. Our environmental economics and policy students they are able to look at the law and policy surrounding bodies of water and our environmental science students, well, they get to dip their feet in a little bit of everything. So great hands-on experiences here and another great hands-on uh, opportunity and one that's very unique to Guelph is the Bachelor of Bio Resource Management found on page 38. So much like the previous two programs I spoke about, this also has um, a focus of, on science in the environment, but as well it has a focus on business. So Bachelor of Bioresource Management students are able to take two different majors, one of those being environmental management. So students are able to look at different environmental issues and look at the regulation and remediation of those issues. And in equine management, students are able to look at the health, well-being, handling, and business aspects of the equine industry. Business is really found in all industries, and it's also found on page 42. So our Commerce students, or Bachelor of uh, Commerce students, they actually just received a brand new building that just opened up last week. It is a brand new business hub where all students are able to have their classes and all of their uh, program counselors under one roof. All students in the Commerce program will take a general first year where they'll understand um, all accounting and economics aspects of the business industry before they get going into their specialties. My friend Alyssa was in this program and what she really loved about it was she was able to take courses and work on projects with students from all different majors as it really gave her an idea of how she would be working in the real world. You're not always just working with people in the same industry as you. So in one of her classes she was tasked with creating an app with two other students and pitching it Dragon's Den style to a panel of judges. So they created the perfect playlist. So the hospitality and tourism management student had to figure out what songs would fit best with different restaurant environments. The marketing management student had to figure out how to market that app to different clients and stakeholders. And Alyssa, being in management, economics, and finance, well, she had to figure out how to pay for the whole thing. So that was just one of many projects that she completed with students from all, of her, all other majors. Alyssa also took advantage of our semester abroad program, which you can find on page 20. There are six different countries you can travel to with our semester abroad program. They're just listed on the right side of the map. But Alyssa chose to go to India, where she traveled from the north to the south over an entire semester with 25 Guelph students and a Guelph professor. So she was able to pay Guelph tuition and have all of the courses that she was taking directly apply to her degree when she returned at Guelph. If you're more of an independent person and like to travel by yourself, we also have our exchange programs where you're able to pair up with one of 100 different institutions in 30 different countries. On the facing page, you'll find co-op information on page 21. And as I said, I was in the co-op program. Do you guys have co-op in high school? No? Okay. So co-op in university, the way it works is it's a fully paid, full-time work term uh, for ranging anywhere from one semester up to three semesters. So I did three work terms, one semester each. And I have to say my favorite uh, work term was working at a personal injury law firm where I was able to go to court, 
talk to expert witnesses, and read confidential documents, all while being paid. So I was paid full time, and it was awesome. I, in first year, to get these great jobs, I took a course called Co-op 1100, where I was able to learn all about how to write resumes and cover letters and perform well in interviews. So some, um, some different programs have a big focus on design, and one of those can be found on page 45. It's the Bachelor of Engineering. So our engineers, they have a very big sense of community in this program. They are all under one roof in our engineering building and some of our engineers are actually on the roof for our environmental engineer labs where they're able to test water quality. So I did say there's a huge design project uh, or aspect in this program. You will complete six design projects throughout your entire undergraduate degree. Last year, students did a very interesting design project. Do you guys know what Kinder Eggs are? It's like a chocolate egg with a toy inside. So our students were tasked with creating a toy that would propel something two meters, but fit inside of a large Kinder Egg. So that's like no bigger than this. So that was, what, that was their first year project. So we had students from all different majors working together. So our mechanical engineers, they had to figure out how to make this um, toy propel something two meters. Our environmental engineers had to figure out what different types of plastic would be best to make the toy out of so it's not polluting the environment too much. And our biological and, and uh, biomedical engineers had to make sure that the plastic wasn't toxic, that sort of stuff. So they all worked together. So this design aspect is uh, very helpful and you can become an accredited engineer uh, from this program. Another program on our campus that has great um, design aspects is on, found on page 48 and as our Bachelor of Landscape Architecture. So landscape architecture is a little different than what just normal architects would do. Landscape architects create spaces and places for people to live, work and play. So that's mostly in between the building. It's, it's not the actual buildings themselves. So some examples of careers that some people have done after they've graduated from this program, some of them have gone on to green rooftops in the city to create green park spaces up on city rooftops, but also gone on to um, create amusement parks and just parks in general. If this is a program that sounds interesting to you, I do want to highlight this big red box that's here. This is a background information form. So this is a requirement in applying to, the, to this program as well as your admission average. The deadline for this is March 1st. So the sense of community in this is very, very evident and students are actually able to influence the environment that they live in before they actually graduate. So a city named Barrie, I don't know if you guys know where Barrie is, it's just a little north of here. When they wanted to redesign their waterfront, their city officials came to the university and talked to second year students to get some ideas on how to change the waterfront and that actually ended up going through. So second year students helped create and change the environment that they were living in before they even graduated. So those are all the degree programs offered at the university, but we also have some associate diplomas. So on page 64, you'll see an associate diploma in turf grass management. So this is a two-year program where you're able to be well-versed for all turf grass related industries when you graduate. So some professors and students are actually working with the Blue Jays, the baseball team right now, to try and figure out how to get them to play on real grass for their next season in the Rogers Center. That's just one example of what they would be doing. But on the facing page, on page 65, you'll see that there are associate diplomas, four of them offered at our regional campus in Ridgetown. And turning to page 66, we have the University of Guelph Humber. So this is a university that's offered, uh, that's found in Toronto, that has seven unique programs where you can get a degree from the University of Guelph and a diploma from Humber all in four years. So that's two credentials from one institution. So those are all the degree programs offered at the university. Oh, no, I'm kidding. On page 40 is the Bachelor of Computing. It's one I didn't talk about. <laughs> So Bachelor of Computing, my friend Mia was in this program and she had some really cool co-op experiences. So she was actually able to work with Google for one of her co-op experiences. 
And um, she was also able, because of those experiences, to work for Amazon full time after she graduated. So Mia was in the computer science major where she looked at the hardware and software theory behind computers. And in software engineering, you'll be able to look at the coding and um, making apps more user friendly. So it's more of the insides of the computers. Both of these majors have an opportunity to have an area of emphasis. And my friend Mia chose English just so she'd be better versed when speaking with her clients. So those are all the degree programs offered at the university. But we also have some other great things that we do offer to make being on campus and being in the city more fun. On page 16, you'll see all of our athletics information. And for any of you that might be interested in becoming a varsity athlete, I do want to highlight the griffins.ca website up here at the top where you can get in contact with a coach as soon as possible. If you're interested in playing sports but maybe not at the varsity level, we do have the best intramural program in the country ranging anywhere from competitive level all the way to social level. So you'll be playing with somebody at the same level as you. My roommate Adelaide, she's a super competitive person and couldn't choose between one sport to pay, play for the entire semester. So she was able to play competitive multi-sport. So every single week she changed the sport that she played. I'm not much of a sports fanatic or workout fanatic, but we do have a brand new athletics facility that is finishing being built this month. And all of the cardio machines actually have Netflix built right onto the machine. If you don't find a club that you are interested in, we recommend you make one of your own. We want Guelph to feel like home for you and find something that you're interested in. If we turn to page six, I can show you where I called home in my first year. So I lived in North Residences, the blue buildings that are here, and I lived in the U-shaped residence called Lampton Hall. Turning to page eight, you can actually see what my room looked like. So I was in the North Residence's double room. My roommate and I got super, super close and we're still really good friends to this day. And all of the people that I met on my floor, I am still very close friends with. We had some great memories, studying late night and um, just trying to make some of those hard times during exams and midterms a little bit more fun. If you're interested in living with students in the same program as you, we do have acad academic clusters where you'll have a ac um, cluster leader so that is a student in the same program as you in an upper year where they can help you out studying for midterms and finals and kind of just letting you know what to look for um, in different exams. They help you balance your academic and social life pretty well. We also have living learning communities. So my friend Heather, who was in zoology that I spoke about previously, she actually came from a fully French-speaking community, so she found the transition into a fully English-speaking community to be a little bit much. So she actually lived in La Maison Française, where she was able to live with people that also spoke French or just like the French culture. So that helps make the transition a little easier. And we also have themed living communities where you can live with students that have the same um, living habits as you as well. When going away to university, one thing that I was a little worried about was food because my dad makes some really good homemade Indian food. But on page 10, I found that the University of Guelph really does food big and well. We have a really big fo focus on sustainability and fresh foods. And I'm not the only one that thinks that we do food well at the university. We are actually ranked best food on university campuses for the past 10 years in a row. So one of my favorite things I was able to get on campus was a gourmet grilled cheese sandwich and I got a different one every single day of the week. My favorite combination was Havarti hot pepper and pesto and I was able to pay for all of this using my meal card. So we have five different meal plan sizes ranging anywhere from light all the way to varsity. So that really just depends on how often you're on campus and how much you eat. The way our meal cards work, they're kind of like a debit card. It works on a declining balance and you only pay for what is on your tray. I got the full size meal plan and it lasted me until my second year, so it was lots of money. Um, what I really loved about it is that I, not only was I able to spend or use it on campus, I was also able to use it off campus. So there are different restaurants around the city of Guelph that are paired up with the university um, that, where you can use your meal cart at. And also you can use it for uh, taxi cabs around the city as well. So, to look at what the city looks like, on page 24 and 25 are our city pages. 
So we have a large, uh, large city amenities with a small community feeling. So there's a wide range of things you can do in the city that kind of fit all different personalities. I have to say my favorite thing to do is uh, Saturday morning going to the farmer's market and getting freshly made donuts uh, for breakfast. So at the beginning of my presentation, I told you guys to think why Guelph and how my answer was why not Guelph. So that wasn't always my answer. I didn't really know where I wanted to go to university or what I wanted to study. So when I was sitting in your shoes listening to these presentations, I was kind of just taking it all in and hoping that one university would sway me one way or another. But little did I know there were actually aspects of my life leading me to the University of Guelph before I even knew it. So I actually had a poster hanging in my room when I was a little girl that I would look at um, and find comfort in when thinking about all the life struggles of a nine-year-old. And it wasn't until halfway through first year that I actually found that poster on campus in the library. So it was an old promotional University of Guelph poster that I had no clue about. So sometimes the clues that lead you to your future um, aren't always obvious when you want them to be, but don't worry, you will find the right place for you. Um, I really did love Guelph for the community aspect, the food, and the co-op option. So I encourage you to come on a journey with us over the next few months. Come visit campus, it's very beautiful. Come visit me and race me on Science and Engineering Sunday or Fall Preview Day. Do your research, there are hundreds of universities that are available with all different um, options. So do your research, but I encourage you to apply to the University of Guelph and come visit us. So I'll be here to answer any questions you may have and pick up those access, VIP access forms um, where I can give you more additional information. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. You're welcome.